Entering the atmosphere in T minus 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Hello everyone and welcome to the Omega Metroid Podcast from OmegaMetroid.com. My name is Andy Spateri, joined by Dakota Lasky. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Had a nice holiday weekend here in in the States. And it was uh, full of barbecuing and outdoorsiness and sunshine and food and good times. So yeah, I had a good long weekend and nice. just uh, getting through getting through the week you know um nothing too crazy other than that how are you doing i'm doing pretty good um i'm actually going to my first all elite wrestling show tomorrow live from the calgary stampede i'm pretty excited oh nice yeah do you know have they announced the card yet uh they announced a card for dynamite they haven't really announced much for collision which is going to be taking place right after but uh we got hangman page versus brian danielson mariah may willow nightingale um Jericho's fighting Samoa Joe in like a stampede <laughs> street fight, and okay. uh, shoot, they announced something else too. But now I now I can't remember. But it, it sounds like it's going to be awesome. Swerve's going to be there. Uh, Osprey. So it's going to be a great time. Yeah, I was going to say it sounds like I got a stacked card right there. That sounds, yeah, that sounds awesome. It, it's going to be a fun show. You know, every time. So so they usually come, or at least they did last year. They came to Calgary during the Stampede, but usually I'm in Chicago for the Zelda Dungeon Marathon, but this year I'm not. So mm-hmm. got to, to work out and, and go, and I'm dragging my wife to her first wrestling show. It's going to be really, really fun. And, and by the way, speaking of Sam, uh, and speaking of you, you have a uh, an unwitting cameo appearance in the latest Spateria reviews that, uh, that we just released oh. about New York City. So uh, oh. yeah, your, your name pops up once or twice in there. Oh, so you refer to me. I was like, oh, did you like record me or something? You, you have been record? referred to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was like, that's different than Cameo. Um, no, that's cool. I will check that out. I'm interested to see what or hear what Sam's opinion is of the show. Um, I should go to another AEW show. I haven't been since the first Arthur Ashe. Yeah. So, well, that was a good card, too, actually. That was, actually. I mean, that was a fantastic, fantastic show. Dare I say, wasn't there Hangman versus Daniel Bryanson? Or Brian that, was, that was the first one, I think, actually. <laughs> well, there we yeah. go. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm about to see the same match tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, because that's number three you're going to. I yeah. Think. So, um, that's going to be cool. Very um, cool, very cool. I would love to go to a WWE show again soon. I haven't been to one of those, and they're on fire lately. But I haven't been since Raw at, at the Barclays Center, I think, in, since before COVID. You know, the last WWE show that I went to... I think there was like Curtis Axel in the main event versus uh, like somebody. Already. Yeah, like it was right after oh, yeah. the the one WrestleMania with uh, Fandango in it. So it was it wasn't the best oh, draw I've ever been to. It was a while ago. Then, it was a while ago. Season. Yeah. Okay. But hey, they're they're coming back to Calgary pretty soon too. So maybe I don't know. Maybe we'll check it out. Um, but we what we are going to check out today for sure is a bunch more of your Metroid Prime Four questions. We. We promised part two of our Metro Prime 4 Beyond Q&A last week. We had so many questions that uh, we couldn't possibly fit it all into one episode. To be honest with everybody, we have so many questions, we're probably not going to fit them into two episodes. We may revisit the rest of the questions that we didn't get to down the line. We're going to try and get to at least a question or two from everybody. Um, so if you asked a bunch of questions and we're, we're skipping over some of them, just trying to fit everyone else into the show. But uh, yeah, we got, we got a whole schwack of stuff to get to here today. So I almost feel like we shouldn't dilly dally here, Dak, and just get right down to business. Although, um, I have to say, (laughs) did, did you see any, uh, any response to the question that you asked our fans last week when we went off the air? Oh yeah. Uh, You know what? I completely forgot about that. I'm not going to lie. So wait, the question was, um, I think it was, is Silex Joey? And I forgot about that till I looked at your face right now too. And I was like, did anyone say anything to that? (laughs) I think everyone was just like, so like just distraught at the very idea that they, they didn't even answer. Well, let me, I mean, I'm going to look, I'm going to look real quick. Um, I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody did. So that's fine because I obviously everybody is so they're just so exciting that they're like frozen with anticipation that it could be Joey. So I understand that they don't want to like they didn't 
voice that because they were just oh, I, I, they can't they couldn't handle it. I get it. I get it. Um, what's what was your what was your answer to to this question, Andy? Um, well, my answer was dependent on if if Silex <laughs> is Joey. That would only work for me if we also got Diesel showing up in Metroid Prime 4. And maybe uh, maybe some of those killer penguins as well. Like, th- those guys got to come in. For anybody that doesn't know, Diesel is like the little mm. flying head guy that, that mentors Joey. So he could be kind of cool if he showed up in Metroid Prime 4. Uh, the killer penguins, though, would be pretty awesome. So if we get some killer penguins, I'll accept that. You know, I'm not going to lie. As much as it's, it's not going to be Joey... If it was like an older Joey, <laughs> like I'm, not, I think that would actually kind of be hype. like I would be like, no, that would be just so out of left field and un, like, unrealistic that if it actually happens, it would turn around to being actually really cool. I think, <laughs> you know. It, it does have the potential to be that, but if I may throw another wrestling reference out there, it also has the potential to be like the finger poke of doom too, where it's just like so lame was, that people are see, just I like, was, ugh. I was thinking it was more like Undertaker at Mania this year. Everyone expects Stone Cold Steve Austin, but we got Taker. So I'm like, oh, you're expecting Silex to be someone we don't know or Samus's brother or whatever, or Adam's brother or cousin or something. Nope, it's Joey. And Joey, he's like 30 years old and, you know, bags under his eyes. Yes. I, <laughs> he's had a hard life. <laughs> he's had a, I would, I low key, like I unironically think that would actually be fire. Like if they pull, if they could somehow pull that off, I would give huge props to the, to the story writers there. I mean, it would, would be, be pretty hilarious. incredible. Um, I, I do wonder, like, give me a Samus's percentage here, Dak. How many, what percentage of Metroid fans do you think know who Joey is like less than 3%. I was going to say maybe like 5%. No, I think, you I think, think that's even, too much. I think one to 3% is generous. <laughs> I think it's a fraction of a percent possibly. So I don't even think a majority of the listeners of this show <laughs> maybe know who Joey is. And we've talked about him on multiple shows. Well, and, and to so, be fair, I wouldn't know really who Joey is until we started. I mean, I knew the name, but I, I didn't know like the character at all before we started reviewing the manga. So, I mean, yeah, you know, maybe 5% is a, is a bit of a stretch, but the people that like yeah. him, man, they love him. They love that little guy. He has cool, uh, roller skate shoes and an How exoskeleton. Of that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, what is it called? The, the, the gauntlet. What is it? Isn't that a name? Oh, Oh, come on, uh, come on, Andy. You're supposed to be a Metroid the, fan. Yeah, uh, the the Joey Exo skeleton. Doesn't, isn't rig. like his his dad gives it to him. Or it's something? his dad. It's not, uh, field knuckle. The field knuckle. The That's a pretty cool knuckle, name, actually. Of course, everybody knows the field knuckle. A that sounds like a Super Smash Bros. Boy. item, to be honest. It like, sounds like a Mega Man item. Yeah, or yeah well, that that's too. <laughs> and that's kind of um, what it is, to be honest. That's pretty much what it is. Um, all right. Well, we have a bunch of questions here, and we after do. we just dilly dallied again for another five minutes, let's let's jump into them. So yeah, we're not going to get to everybody's. We're also avoiding questions that I feel like we've answered before, or we answered on or talked about in like mm. the previous two shows. That like speculation about like the time travel stuff. Like I don't know if we can really talk more about that. Mm-hmm. If we, unless unless Andy, you found some new details. You know, I was kind of <laughs> thinking like. Uh, we're not going to re-answer a lot of the questions that we've touched on, as you said. If your question has maybe like a different spin that we can think of something a little bit unique to it, we'll, we'll try and circle back. But we're, we're going to focus on some other questions first and then kind of pick out the rest as we go along here. So that being said, let's get started. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. You, All right. Set it off. Set it off. So first up. Uh, this is from Sci-Fi Brawny over on Twitter. Uh, Sci-Fi you... Brony, right? Isn't it Brony? Maybe I, I've got uh, Brawny in my mind from LeBron J. Let's not dilly dally. Let's let's keep going. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, do, do you think there will be bonuses if the system sees a dread save file like the original Prime with Fusion Suit, for example? Mm. Good question. Lovely and idea. So I I think it depends um, on you know, whether Metroid Prime Four is cross gen. If you're going to be able to import your Switch saves to the new Switch Two, if it is. Uh, I'd like to think so that maybe you could get a little bit of something if, if there's a dread file, but I do have to admit, I, I'm not sure the last Nintendo game that, that did this. I, I can't remember the last mm. game that had any kind of bonuses like that. Do you, can you think of anything off the top of your head? 
not other than metroid i mean aside from like amiibos you know but like yeah. not like having saved cartridges um there might be some rpgs that maybe like maybe i'm wrong xenoblade maybe where like if you have the previous well i don't know it carries over or something like that, that. No. I'm, I'm trying to think like there might be a game like that but that would be a really cool idea um i think it would probably be more likely we saw it with maybe metroid prime remastered than and prime 4 than dread and prime 4 like maybe you could unlock like the original phase and suit or, or something like that or mm -hmm. um as much as I would love to see the Dread Suit in like Prime Four, I feel like that connectivity just because Retro is making the same game, like it might just work out that way, uh, where they they worked on both games. So I think this is a great idea. I'd love to see it. I don't think it's super likely just for that reason you said, Andy, that it's like not common. But I think maybe if it's remastered, um, I could see that, and it would be kind of cool. I think it's a great like mar in game marketing thing because it like rewards you for having both games. So it's like it's like Pokemon almost like the, the you know having both versions of it. So like. It, it might entice people like, oh, maybe I will go pick up Dread or Metroid Prime Remastered, even yeah. if it's just to get that reward or bonus. But some people might do it. I mean, it's a good idea. And and I think that they, in, in an ideal world, they, they probably should. And they should really do that probably more often, to be honest with you, for, for some games that have a, a little bit of connectivity like that. But I'm, I'm kind of with you. I, I wouldn't hold my breath just because the precedent n isn't necessarily there. Um, but it, w it would be cool. But I, I also think that there, other than the precedent, there's probably some other things that you need to consider as well that would make that not likely. So, uh, but fingers crossed. We'll we'll see. Yeah. Um, all right, great question. Let's keep going here. This is from Ubu underscore YouTube uh, over on Twitter as well. How expansive do you expect this game to be? I want there to be several binomes levels with lots of exploration and a strong grounded plot. I just wonder if it will be similar to the first Prime, which on average takes 13 to 15 hours to complete. Hmm. Well. What do you think? I kind of think that if this game took you longer than 15 hours to complete, I would be very surprised, to, to be honest. And that's on your first playthrough. I think you're going to get... I think you're going to get like a standard Metroid Prime game. And, and that sounds like like a bad thing, but I don't think it is at all. Like, I just I think that it, it's going to be it's going to be one of those games like, you know, The Last of Us, for example. It's not the world's longest game. Not the world, not the world's biggest game, but it, it's kind of like eating a steak, right? Like you you enjoy it, you savor it, you you maybe you play it again for different difficulties after you're done. Um, and I think that's fine. I mean, I Yes, I want the world to be large, expansive, condensed, packed with stuff and, and whatnot. But I also do kind of... I don't want Metroid to fall into the, the trap of... Um, like, I, I kind of feel like Zelda has fallen into this a little bit, where it's like bigger equals better, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of bloat in Tears of the Kingdom, and I don't think that Metroid Prime needs bloat. I think it needs to look great, play great, and I think it will. And, and I would take that with a shorter like quote unquote shorter runtime versus some other things that maybe it could do to expand that, that experience out. But I do think that there are lots of things that you could add to and not pad out the runtime, but like add some extra value to that as well. What do you think, Dak? Um, yeah, I think you're pretty on point in terms of the, the timing. I, I could see it maybe being 20 hours, 15 to 20, perhaps. Um, my expectation is honestly, we're probably going to get the same amount of areas that Metroid prime had. So like six to seven areas, but they're probably each individual area is going to be, I think, maybe like two times bigger than the areas in Metroid Prime. Mm. And probably to compensate for that, we're going to see maybe like more elevators or portals or whatever, kind of like with Dreadhead. So that way you're not just doing two times more walking, even though the world is bigger. So that's my expectation. I think we'll probably end up seeing a game that still takes about that same amount of time. The worlds are just going to be maybe twice the size ish but i'm not expecting like 14 areas or something like that or 20 different areas like i'm, I'm definitely expecting kind of what we saw in metroid prime except maybe like each individual area is a lot more fleshed out mm -hmm. rather than like you know metroid prime like one of those areas is frigate orpheon which is only for the beginning and becomes town overworld later or magmore caverns which obviously is more of like a transitional area than like a full-grown <clears throat> actual like area of the game I'm expecting yeah six to seven, maybe two times bigger than what we saw area per area in Metroid Prime, and about like 15 to 20 hours, which I still think is really solid. And yeah. like I'm not expecting a 40, 50 hour game. Um, I'm not expecting like the worlds to be three to four times bigger and just like a huge, massive, massive areas. I would love like areas you know two times bigger than just give me more like 
crevices and caves and places to explore within those areas. Uh, I, I think so. Uh, like, I think what I'm expecting from this game too is it's going to feel bigger, even if it's necessarily not like, I, I think it's going to have like more of those like open rooms and like open air rooms, kind of like artifact, like temple. better sky boxes, all that. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Stuff. Like that kind yeah. of stuff. So it, it's going to feel big because it's going to be open. And I think yeah, that I mean, the end of the trailer kind of points to that. I was going to say the end of the trailer is exactly that. Where like that area that Samus can actually go in might not really be more than maybe two times bigger than like town overworld, but the skybox feels bigger and it doesn't feel like you're enclosed in on these like walls. Like you can see stuff in the distance a lot better. Like you play town overworld and it's cool, but like, it doesn't feel like you're, there's like a massive, huge forest and jungle around you. It feel mm. it does feel kind of like roomy. Like you're, enclosed in these bowl shaped rooms at times and you can't like look over the wall and there's mm -hmm. you know unless you go to artifact temple you don't see those expansive kind of things so um it's here and there in the original prime thing obviously prime two and prime three do a better job at that of having those kind of larger um more expansive like scenery that goes beyond what you can actually play in the game so we'll probably see a bit more of that but yeah the end of the prime four trailer definitely pointed to that i mean even the beginning where like samus is infiltrating the base right like you can see out off into the distance beyond the walls like the whole base itself and all the ships flying around and whatnot mm -hmm. obviously she lands next to like a rock wall behind her but it feels expansive in that way too so thank you i agree it's definitely gonna get more into like the feel of being in this huge area you might not be able to go and climb that big tree in the distance even though i hope we can um that would be a really cool kind of dungeony area to climb that like a tower but uh yeah I think I think it's not going to be too much, too much bigger, but a good amount bigger. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a fair expectation to have. And, you know, I, I guess we don't have to wait long to see. Um, let's go over. I'm going to jump around a little bit here. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Let's go answer a question from uh, from our pal Big Griffin only uh, from the Omega Metroid team here. This is a great question. And and I have an answer, but I feel like it's too simple. Uh, the question is, what's the single best and single worst thing Metroid Prime 4 can do? Hmm. Is it, is it too low-hanging fruit to say, like, the single best thing the game can do is be incredible and the worst thing it can do is, is just be mediocre? No, you can't. You can't give that. You gotta do. You gotta be more specific. Like, like that, I, I agree, that. too. And, and, but I, I guess what I'm saying is, like, and this more so goes for the worst part. Like, it, I feel like if this game is mediocre, that is that's really rough considering all of the money that went into restarting the development into what we're probably going to see a sustained marketing push here. The the fan expectations, the weight of that were after waiting so long. Like, I I think that I think that that's the single worst thing it can do. I actually feel less strongly that the the best thing that it can do is be an awesome game because I think that we're all kind of hoping and dare I say expecting it to be an awesome game probably the best thing that prime four could do is sell a bunch of copies. Like, like honestly speaking, no, like, these are cop out answers. I, Andy. I, I know... Obviously the best thing would be, it would be great. Like, no, you can't. And you have to be specific here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sticking up for Griff on the answer. I'll answer. How about this? I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting there. It. I'm getting there, but you like, gotta so, get to it. So, so the best no thing you can do is sell copies. But if we're talking <laughs> about the actual game itself, um, which we are, which we are, <laughs> That's the question. I think the best thing that this game can do is drag Metroid kicking and screaming into a, a I don't know, I guess a new era like where there are people that, that have voices and, and they talk to you and they have voices and Samus talks back and maybe you have Silex who's an actual three-dimensional villain and we learn a little bit about his character motivations and what drives him because like all that the Metroid series has had really is these monster type of villains, which is great, but... I think it's time for something new. Uh, we were almost there with Ravenbeak, but not quite. I think that it could introduce that new type of villain. I think that it could modernize maybe some of the interactions between Samus and other characters. Specifically, if we're going to see Silex talk, like let's let's have Silex and Samus have a conversation or or an exchange or something like that. That would be. It's a little thing, but I think it would really add a lot. Of you know, on top of obviously those low hanging fruit answers, which I mean they are true. <laughs> Yes, they are. Um, okay, fair. Um, I think for me, best thing that Prime 4 can do, I think, is just have a lot of replayability. I think in this day and age, Metroid doesn't have enough of that. Like, I don't think, like, playing for the best ending or whatever is, or playing for, like, another difficulty is, is good enough, I think. Like, 
certainly there are people who love the speed run games, loved 100%. They are a small group of people who play Metroid. And I really think that games, if the game has more modes to play, like, you know, like stuff like Metroid Dread's boss rush mode and Dread mode is great, right? Like more stuff like that, a co-op mode, like DLC down the line, like reasons to go back to the game besides, oh, I want 100% it, um, like more difficulty options, stuff like that. And, and even going down to, as we've talked about on the show, like maybe different modifications to your upgrades, different mods, like ways to, you know, use certain weapons and whatnot. I just had, I think we, the game needs to expand beyond replayability being how fast and how good you can be at the game. Mm-hmm. It should, I think m- lean a bit more into like trying new ways of playing the game, being more creative, having f- like refreshing takes and whatnot and playing in different, you know, game styles with different arsenals and whatnot. That stuff, I think, is going to speak to a larger audience for the series. And I think, I mean, even for me, as someone who's a uh, diehard Metroid fan and a big Metroid Prime fan, I would play the games more often, I think, if I can go back and and feel like I have a lot more, you know, diversity in what I can do going into the game rather than just, oh, I'm going to do it 100% this time or I'm going to do it not 100%. I'm going to play on hard or not hard. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go for the full ending or not. You know, so it's like that's what I think would be great. Um, and then going back to the previous question, <clears throat> worst thing Prime 4 could do, I think, is maybe be short. If it's shorter than the time we were talking about. I, I love Metroid Fusion. It's a short game. It's like a quick, fun, portable game. But like when I play a Prime game, like it's something that I do want to put some time into and kind of get lost in the world for a significant amount of time. And if the game's short, not that I'm expecting it to be, but if it's short, I feel like after all that wait, it would kind of be a bummer if you can just cruise through it in a few hours and be like, oh, that's it. Like, that's the game. Mm-hmm. I would love it to have some longevity. So, like, yeah, I do maybe feel like it's going to be more 15 to 20 hours, but I hope it's not short. As much as I love some shorter games for that replayability, I would like the replayability to come from elsewhere and still give us a nice chunky game experience. Uh, yeah, that, that's fair. I, I don't know if I'd say being short's like the worst thing that it can do, although it's not ideal not by any means, but... I, I think if there's more ways to replay it, that mitigates a lot of what... Like, I think the combination of what right. you said is... Yeah. Like, if one of them's not there, then yeah, that's that's tough. Um, yeah, this is this is certainly not the worst thing, but I feel like I kind of gave a cop-out answer for the worst thing, so I'll give you kind of a an answer here as well. Um, okay. I really, really, really think that there should not be any missable scans in this game. I don't think we need them. I, I think it just kind of pisses players off, and, and they're just like, well, I'm not going to go and replay this whole game. If I if I miss this one ice streak bat, like, now I can't get the bonus ending or whatever. Like, I, I think you should just find a way. Honestly, even with bosses, like, put boss rush mode in there so you can scan them again if you miss them. Like, let's just do that. Let's just have that in the game and, and make it a thing that you can go back and always get those scans. Because I, I feel like that's just, like, kind of an archaic thing to me let's just let's get rid of that um certainly not the worst thing but a thing that i think it shouldn't do i'm okay with that yeah totally fine as much as you know that was the thing in previous games get rid of it yeah um all right let's uh hey, let's you want to pick down. a few yeah let me pick a few i'm yeah, gonna okay. jump around here and see what we got um let's see all right this one i thought was interesting from uh jacob crosschell uh who i believe is a, a recent new listener of the show so Thanks for submitting a question. Um, do you guys think that there is any chance we will see Samus's base hideout in this game? I'm thinking she has like a place to relax and refuel her ship between missions. I would love to see this. It would add some realism. I think the series best desperately needs. Great okay. question. Yeah, I thought Great that was cool. Great idea. Yeah. Highlighted this one. Yeah, yeah. What do you, um, um, I'm, I'm going to jump in on this one. Yeah, first, go ahead. I, I do like this idea. I do like there being a... I mean, I guess on one hand, like she's a mercenary bounty hunter, like her being on the move kind of is maybe like an antithesis to this idea. On the other hand, I feel like Samus's ship itself is kind of that hub that I think works well for this. Like, I'm not sure if I could see Samus just like kicking back outside the ship and like setting up camp in a campfire, even though I would be down for that. But I definitely see more of like the prime three idea where like maybe instead of like just being able to just sit in the cockpit like samus can get up and maybe move around in her ship a little i don't know how much space is in there but like mm-hmm. i'm assuming she has a little bit more space than just where she sits right so like maybe she can move around a little bit more i think we've seen like there's some back area behind her chair that she can access and whatnot like maybe you can move around in the ship a bit more and 
I don't need to be like Skyrim where I'm going to go take a nap or I'm going to go and, <laughs> you know, eat a, a drumstick or something like that. But like, I, 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 can, I like that. I like that idea of, of Samus having that hub space she can go to. I think the ship would be good for that. I don't know if she'll have a hideout or a base somewhere, but I'm not against that either. I just think the ship makes a lot more sense. But cool yeah. idea. Um, yeah, I really like the idea. I, I don't know how likely it's it's going to be, to be honest, but I think there's a lot of potential there. Um, you know, my, my mind kind of went where yours did, Dak, with, like, the, the ship would be a good opportunity for that. But, I mean, also, like, if if the game takes place on, on a singular planet, I don't see a reason why you couldn't find, like, a room, maybe, like, the landing site where you initially start the game and you can come back and you can, like, that's kind of Samus's hub. And, like, I mean, that's actually kind of to your point about replayability. That's maybe something that you can do to, to extend some hours or, like, put some extra time in. Like, if you want to go and find xyz to to add to your little base you could definitely do that and, and it would kind of give it a little bit more personality so i actually really like that idea i think there's a lot of potential there like i uh i, I played horizon for ben west not that long ago and, and there's a, a base that you can get there and you can you can kind of spruce it up and, and have a bunch of different items there and it is kind of just nice to have a little place where you know there's no enemies you know there's no you know anything going on i, I kind of think that that would be cool you know what it actually reminds me of is um castlevania harmony of dissonance for the game boy advance where like there's right. this one random room in the castle and you collect furniture throughout the entire adventure and every time you go to that room all the furniture you collect just goes into this room so hey I, i'd be down for that it's like the the secret bases from pokemon i love it which i, which I always loved um yeah i think it'd be cool if like maybe they tried to implement like a, a side quest kind of system or like maybe finally met, Samus goes on bounties and like she yeah. can go off and do that. But it's like maybe her base or her ship is where she could check. Like, is there a bounty to go and get? Is there, you know, some kind of alert that I can go and follow up on that? Can I tinker with my suit or something like that? I still think the ship makes the most sense. I feel like Samus is someone who wouldn't just be like chilling out in the open or something or like mm -hmm. in a room on the planet. But I, I still think that would be a cool idea. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely against it. I still don't know if it's like, entirely in line with what makes metroid metroid and if it's super necessary and i think if you were going to implement it it does make the most sense in her ship but uh i like this kind of stuff i think that like yeah like it makes sense if samus is on like a, a mission like mm. she's got to stop and rest at some point yeah what is she doing during that time where does she do that so yeah, um, yeah I, I, like I think it. that i think that fits i just i don't know how likely that that's going to be i i could see though going to your ship and having like a not a base, but like a list of like hunts or whatever have you yeah. that, that you could do. But... I, I think it's a lot more likely we see her ship as that kind of hub space where she can access different things, maybe move around a little bit, whatever. I don't think it's likely that she has like a physical base on a planet somewhere or a hideout. Yeah. I think the ship would probably be how we see it. I, I agree. Um, and I think that Samus is, is frankly just sitting in that ship, even even that. I don't know. I think I could see her. I mean, I, I do think we'll probably I could see the prime three Thing being implemented where you know she can poke at the doodads but mm -hmm. i don't know i could see her getting up and and moving around a little bit potentially that would be cool. i'd like that that'd be cool yeah um okay let's see all right this one we got one from from mega blade do you think we may get uh, this is for you here andy do you think we may get Kraid in prime four as a <laughs> boss or character after he appeared in dread um he said over ridley so the question is do you think Kraid will show up and not ridley but you you could also answer if you think maybe Kraid's going to show up at all. Part of me says no. Now, I, <laughs> and you know what? If Kraid didn't show up in in Metroid Dread, I would have thought for sure that Met, that Retro was going to fulfill the the original Kraid idea from the first Metroid Prime. But I, I don't know. I kind of I kind of feel like now is is not necessarily the time for Kraid. I'm I'm not even mm -hmm. like. I'm pretty sure that Ridley is going to show up, but I'm not even 100% sure that Ridley is going to show up at, at this point. I think if you could find a way, you know, we talked about time travel, stuff like that. If you could find a way to to have all those classic Metroid enemies come in, I, I think that'd be great. But I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I think the chances went down after Kraid showed up in Metroid Dread. Would you, would you agree with that? I don't know. I, I don't know. On one hand, it's... I, I feel like the like I don't think Retro is now thinking, oh, Dread didn't have Ridley, so we have to have Ridley, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think they would want to have the character of their own volition or not. So, like, I think we're going to get Ridley 
I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 99% sure we're going to get Ridley. And that's just, I think, because Retro likes having Ridley in, in their games. Like, he was in yeah. two of the three main primes. He was in Prime 3 twice. I think that's just like, they like having Ridley as a character, so I expect Ridley to show up. I think if Crate shows up, Ridley still shows up. Yes. The only reason why I'm not entirely convinced that Crate doesn't show up is that I think I think maybe Metacraid makes an appearance, the old concept art for for Craid back in the day with the big helmet and whatnot. Part of me is like when I'm thinking like, oh, if I was retro or I was someone at retro, what would I be? I'd be combing through old Metroid concepts like what never made it to the final product? What could we pull from? And that's something that I would mm-hmm. I would pull from. So I don't think it's a hundred percent because like we haven't seen created Craid in 3D, like in a 3D type gameplay like an fps or whatever they wanted to put him in a previous game and i don't i don't necessarily think that seeing him in dread means that we wouldn't see him in if anything it would be i think more surprising we see him again so maybe they could yeah. be thinking of it that way whereas like the expectation is craid doesn't show up so subvert that expectation we get both when was the last time ridley and craid were both in a game together Metroid right like, Zero mission i mean that's a long time so maybe they they bring him back you know like i, I would i would be okay with craid coming back again like screw it it would be a fun boss battle you know here, here's what i will say i i am sure that Kraid is going to show up in a metroid prime game at some point like yeah i mm-hmm. i think retro does want to get that that Kraid fight out like they whatever they couldn't do it back in the day but technology certainly evolved since then and they they i'm sure they could make it work now right. i think he will show up i i just don't know if it's going to be in prime four i I could see maybe the next game, like I'd feel a lot more confident, but um, I mean, you're right. Like I, 2D necessarily hasn't influenced 3D and, and vice versa to, to a great extent. So maybe they are just like, whatever, let's bring Kraid back. Let's bring Ridley back. And cause I mean, I think that's what a lot of Metroid fans want. You certainly wouldn't find anybody complaining if that happened. I don't think. I don't think so either. Cause it's, I, I agree. Like, I think we see him eventually and it would be such a sick boss battle. Like I feel like just that alone is when I like, especially in these kinds of games like nintendo is so like oh it has to be a new fresh idea new idea right created 3d we haven't seen that yet like yeah. that would be different that would be new so it would be cool to get that finally see his big belly in your face immersively right like come on everybody's been looking forward to that it'd be so awesome I, i'd love it i think i think Kraid being in prime four as another like surprise again would actually be kind of funny <laughs> like oh it's Kraid again I, I would prefer like Metacrade though. That that would be yes, over the Meta top. Metacrade would be so sick. That would be so. And I good. have to imagine that they feel the same way. Someone at Retro has to be thinking at some point during the development. Metacrade, get him in here again. A character. I'm like, he's there. Screw it. Metacrade's there. Let's don't need a huge explanation for it. Let's let's do it. Let's send it. All right. Let's uh, let's rock. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one more, and then I'll hand it over. Sure. Hand it over to you. Um, this one's from Tony W36. Thanks, Tony. Uh, what is one aspect of the classic Metroid Prime formula that you would not want to see changed in Prime Four? My answer would be save rooms. Even though the game will most likely have auto save, I still enjoy the design of save rooms and the music and animations of Samus when she is saving is always great. So I hope they keep save rooms. So, Andy, what do you think? A classic part of the Metroid Prime formula. What do you hope that they don't change? They keep it as is. Good question. Um, there is something kind of comforting about a good save room, isn't there? And particularly like the landing site where your ship is. Um, hmm, because there's a lot that I would change about the, the classic formula. Like, I think you could streamline the way that you have beams, have visors, all that kind of stuff. Um one thing that I wouldn't change, you know, I, I saw this question elsewhere, and I don't think that this would change, but but just to maybe throw it out there, um, I I would hope and expect that kind of the same like strafing lock on mechanism comes in for fighting because I think that there are going to be people that aren't necessarily seasoned first person shooter, you know, fans that that like to play Metroid Prime. I think there's going to be a lot of Metroid fan or like fans playing their first Metroid game with Prime Four and. Nintendo wasn't the most exactly first-person shooter savvy fan base, so uh, basically, it, like the 
what the first game used to help out those kind of players with the the targeting it was very zelda like i do hope that that returns and and maybe you also have options for you know more seasoned players to turn that off if you want to strictly use your kind of like metroid prime remastered that would be one thing off the top of my head but that's a that's a great question um what do you got dak i might have to change my answer if you have something better yeah um what aspect of because i mean there are some things that like we saw in the trailer where i'm like i can't be like oh i hope they keep scanning the same because we know yeah. scanning is still working like we know there's a strafe and, and whatnot um you know i i think i'm gonna say because this is something that you'll agree with andy but i do hope that they don't uh reintroduce beam ammo mm-hmm. and they keep the beams to be unlimited ammo because I hope that there's other arsenal options that does have ammo and are stronger and whatnot. But I yeah. think like just being able to have that access to beams that will always be there. So you don't have to struggle for ammo and run things down. I mean, I remember when I started playing Destiny 2 primary ammo, you had to pick that up now. And now it's like primary ammo you have infinite of. So like there's always, it's good to always have like something that you'll always have ammo for. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've I don't know. A- that's probably one maybe. I like elevators too. I hope the elevators yeah. stay. I love I love just the the shot of like the big wide shot Samus on the elevator going up into a new environment coming down. Like I I love that. So I, I hope that stays as well. I've got an answer for you. And I, okay. I think I don't know if you're gonna like it. I don't know if a lot of people listening are gonna like it, but here I go. I hope to an extent the uh I don't even know how to properly say it, so I'll just generalize it. I hope that there's something along the lines of, like, an artifact hunt to an extent. Um, so the energy cells from Corruption, the the temple keys from Echoes. Mm. I, like, I really like the idea of, like, you have you have to go and explore the world. There, is, there are certain things that you need to, to acquire. There are certain things that you have, puzzles you have to figure out. I like the idea behind it, which encourages you to go and explore the world. I do think that it can be improved and streamlined. And we talked about this a bit last week. I I think that Prime 3 probably did it the best. I do think that you should be able to get them as you go and be rewarded for getting them if you do. And and I really don't think it's that big of a deal if you miss them and you go back after the fact to to get those certain items. So I I know that that's... uh, I know it's a bit of a, I guess, a controversial subject or a touchy subject, but I, I like the idea in principle. I mean, you're, I, I've never thought that the end game key hunts in any of the prime games have ever been an issue. To be quite honest, I think, and I think it's always been overblown. I'm also a big collect collectathon fan. Donkey Kong 64 Donkey Kong is one of my 64. favorite games of all time. Yeah. I I do not I will collect. I don't care. Like that's just something that's like a it's like just a, a pure video game thing I love is going out and collecting and picking up stuff. So mm-hmm. like if a game says you got to go pick up 12 frogs or whatever, I'll go do it. If I if I'm enjoying the game that is, right? It's not like we're like Breath of the Wild or whatever. I didn't yeah, go and pick go up Go get the... 12 Restless Crickets. Like, whatever. Yeah, like I didn't get all the Korok poops or whatever. Like, okay, fine. But like, <laughs> but that's because there are also like 500 of those. That's 900. Um, yeah. But again, if I'm also like super into the game, like I didn't mind getting all the bananas in Donkey Kong 64 because yeah. that's fun. So yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely against it. I feel like how it was done in the original Prime is totally fine. I, I have no problem with that. I think, uh, I think some people who struggle with it need to uh, get good. Yeah, my, you know, my, is my opinion. The, the only one that I think I would take real umbrage with myself is going to be Echoes, um, because you, you kind of had to do it yeah. twice. You had to find the like the the little thing that showed like the soldier body, and then you had to find the room for where the actual yeah. Key it's was. not it's not perfect. Like, it'd definitely it, it's be not streamlined. Perfect. And I'm not saying like oh, end of the game. I want everyone to have to find fifty horseshoes, or yeah. whatever. Like I, you know, like I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to be ridiculous with it. I just think that I agree. In principle, it's not a bad thing. I don't mind it, and it can be done in a fun way, and and in a way, like you said, that encourages people to, especially people who are probably just running through the game and get it done. Yeah, to go and explore the world more, and and see what it has to offer. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I think that's actually a great answer, much better than whatever you said at first yeah i was struggling <laughs> a little bit the first i was like Oosh, i don't know what i would keep um yeah, certainly not the screw one. attack um okay <laughs> okay well uh let's let's continue here um i'll tell you what let's let's go to our man zach who uh is actually gonna podcast with me later this month for the great metroid area ranking zach asked 
do you guys think that Prime 4 has the potential to evolve and add more story via DLC? Or do you think that Retro will tell one story and be done with it? I know they usually do the latter, but it will be 18 years between installments when Prime 4 comes out. Let me know your thoughts. I really hope so. I've I've had this idea in my mind that I, I just can't get out. I really, really think it would be cool if you got some DLC missions Silex. and you play Silex. Yeah, it's got a lot of Come so on. Fun. <laughs> and and it's not like the there's no precedent there. I mean, you played as him in Metroid Prime Hunters, like it. I mean, I I don't think it'd be. Beyond... Uh, you don't play as him in the campaign, though. Well, no, but like like at least you play <laughs> in, in like you have his weapon, you have his morph ball, whatever it is, the shock coil, like no, the you, lock jaw, the, the shock lock coil. You're right. I'm, Come I'm on, sorry. Andy. Uh, Come on. So this, know this. it's not like. It's not like we're abs like it's not like we're we're drawing on a blank canvas here. Like we have some idea about what that could look like. So I, I just think it'd be really cool. And again, I think like one of the best things Prime Four can do is build up that new villain, build up that new great character that that people are going to be talking about. Even if they do kill Silex in the first game, like you know in Prime Four, like build up a great character that people will remember. Like I I think that that would be super awesome and kind of uh, give you a different perspective on the story. Maybe that's how we learn Silex's backstory like that. Ideally, I'd want that to be in the main game, but I think that'd be cool if like you could learn about him after the fact through his own missions, his own campaigns, stuff like that. Yeah. I I mean, I totally think that there's the potential to add to the story with DLC. I hope for that. It goes back to my point earlier that adds to the replayability of the game. New DLC comes about, people are going to go back and play it and replay the original plus the DLC. So definitely want that. I, I wish Dread got it, so I hope Prime 4 does. I could, I mean, I think, yeah, like, maybe there's a mission where you play a Silex as, you know, there's a part of the game where you don't know what he's up to and you find out what he was doing during that time. Could be cool. I, I'm not against playing as Silex, necessarily. I, I prefer that over, like, Samus and Silex teaming up or something corny like that, but I think it would even be cool to have, like, DLC of, like, if they're going to do a Prime 5 and Prime 6, maybe there's an a post credits mission or something bless you a post credits dlc or something that continues the story between prime four and like a prime 4.5 you know 4.2 something like that and kind of has a little bit of a post credits thing yeah I, I think this would be great i hope they do this obviously it's not like i want you know more game locked behind additional paywall yeah. but if they're gonna you know put out a, a full package game at full price that is worth the, the value and i enjoy it i have no problem with paying additional or obviously it's a free update that'd be great, but I have no no problem paying you know additional costs to, to get more game, more story. I think also I mean the last time we had major Prime games was in the two thousands. We're like getting DLC yeah. like that wasn't real. That was still in its infant you know stages, right? Certainly was, not a thing Nintendo was doing. So yeah, certainly not. Maybe if it was on Xbox or PlayStation, yeah, but on Nintendo definitely not. So now. This is something I definitely would consider, would expect Retro to be considering. How can they support the game yeah. beyond launch and whatnot with free updates or DLC? So definitely expect that and definitely want it. Yeah, I mean, I think more more Nintendo first party titles than not in recent years, like the big ones, have had DLC. I, I would honestly even be fine if they were just or at like, least updates, or, or at least updates. Yeah, like yeah. even if they said to us like, "Here's ten bucks. It's DLC. It's like a new mission. There's a new bounty hunt at the end." Like. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the story or maybe loosely of beyond. I'd be mm -hmm. fine with that. Like just a little bit of extra something I think would be really cool. So yeah. We'll see. No, hundred percent agreed. Um, okay. Well let's, let's move on. This is from Paulson 91. I, I can't remember if we touched on this or not, but uh, let's just okay. take a crack at it. Um, the big question that's keeping me awake at night, are we stacking or selecting beams? What's your prediction? What's your preference? I... Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I think based on the UI we saw, it suggests that we have more options, but it seems like maybe beams are put together. There could be stacking. Personally, I prefer, I prefer more selection between weapons. So if it is swapping between beams or swapping between stack beams, missiles, and something else and something else, either of that is fine. I'm not a big fan of just st stacking um weapons on its on its own mm -hmm. as it's as its own isolated thing um i don't know what we're gonna get i'm i'm expecting to 
I'm going to say stacking beams, but I do. I am going to admit that there is a solid chance that it's going to be. I'm sorry. I think it's going to be selecting beams, but I think there's a solid chance it's going to be stacking. I'm going to say selecting as well. That That's what I think is going to happen. And I think that there's going to be more than four. Um, but this is my preference, and this is what should happen. I think that you should be able to get, like, let's just say, I don't know, a dozen beams in this game, different types of beams, like the Nova returns, the, the whatever beam comes back. And I think what you should be able to do is select a primary beam and then stack it with a secondary beam. And depending on what you stack with, that gives your beam different effects and, and different uh, different properties. And, and not necessarily all of them are, are pertinent to, like, exploration or advancing the story or the game, but, like, maybe it's just, like, if you stack your plasma beam and you stack your, I don't know, something beam, you get the flamethrower back and it's like this wicked little thing that you can use or the wave buster. Like instead of like those, those beam missile combos bring back like, uh, or, or implement a new way to like mix and match your beams. And that, and that again adds to replayability, gives you a little bit more versatility when you're, when you're playing and how you want to play. I think there's a lot of potential there. Uh, that'd be my preferred way to do it. Like I, yeah. you know, don't know if that's going to be how they're going to roll, but I think it'd be cool. I, I I like that idea. It would be cool, like if you had four base beams where you could mix and match all of them into like different yeah. combinations, and suddenly you have sixteen beams to pick from or whatever it is, right? I don't. I'm bad at math, but you know, yeah, that I think is really cool. I would love to see beam combo like missile combos also come back, but beam combos would be really cool. Yeah, I I think that is like combining beams. Let's go beyond stacking and selecting. Let's start combining beams. Let's let's modernize it. I'm down for that. Yeah, I I think so. Um, okay, well let's uh, let's keep going here. Let's go to we'll do a few more. Yeah, let's go to our newest Omega team member, who ironically is also named Doom uh, Doom GC, a fellow Canadian actually. Um, and ironically, this is for Doominal, and Doom's not here, but we're gonna try our best at it. Uh, <laughs> my question is. Given Doom's music and musical background, what kind of music are you hoping to see in Prime 4? Prime 2 is my favorite. It hit all my sci-fi synth needs while having that signature Prime choral element. Cheers, guys. Keep up the awesome work you do. Thank you so much. Um, well, you and I don't have much of a background in music, but we know what we like and we can talk about what we like. I am... Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm hoping for... I'm hoping for like that classic synthy kind of sound that that really is unique to Metroid Prime. I, I think that it's been way, way, way too long since since we've heard that. Like I remember the first time that I played AM2R and I heard that Metroid Prime synthy kind of remix in there. I, I was like, this is so awesome, and it was just like a blast of nostalgia. It was so incredible. Um, I really hope that that feeling comes back, and and maybe maybe Dak, we can pull a fast one here and combine this with another question that we got from Big Griff who said, what songs would you like to see return slash get remixed for Prime 4? So maybe we'll kind of roll these questions into one. Like, I think like a, a synthy, sweet kind of remix of like Green Brinstar, like that would be super awesome. If, if mm. there's like a, a a water area, like let's get the Meridia theme back. Like the, the I, you know what it is a really, really deep cut, a classic cut that I've talked about before, but I really love the Ridley theme from, from Nestroid so not the classic Ridley one that everyone knows, but like the, uh, there's okay. a really great Metroid metal cover of it. That would be really cool. And maybe that could be a little bit more of a hard edge as well. Um, I, yeah, I just, I want that classic Metroid prime music feel doom could probably talk more about this, but, uh, yeah, I, I just want, I want the feeling back, man. I want the vibes. Yeah. I, I would like the definitely agree with all that. I think, I mean, I like the mix of like that diegetic synthy music, and then like the more obvious themes and bombastic mm -hmm. stuff that's not obviously coming from the world around, like a mix of that stuff. I love the, I, I want a mix of like prime one and prime three, where like you get the lower key stuff and also the big bombastic stuff. I, I personally love when like areas have like the, maybe the more somber or slower kind of overworld theme, but then you get to the depths like Fendrana, right? And it's like a little, it's a little bit of a boogie, you know? Um, I, I like all that kind of stuff. I would love them to maybe work in some new instruments, maybe some new horns, some drums, right? Like some real like deep drums in some areas, uh, a little bit of guitar. We're talking about themes. I would love the Rundus theme maybe to get oh. remixed and give that a little bit, give that to somebody. So like, I, I think you can do a lot to 
still keep that signature Metroid sound while also digging into other stuff. And then another track I would love is the the Saris Yakuza theme from Metroid Fusion. That would so, be unreal. I would love more fusion music. I would honestly love some more fusion and other M music to get remixed and brought back into the full. I'm not even going to lie to you. I would love a little bit more of that. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, we, we've talked a bunch about Metroid Dread soundtrack, like 2D Metroid specifically. It just feels like they've really missed the mark from, uh, you know, from bringing that back. But, you know, one thing I think we should consider as well is like, let's maybe bring back some... Uh, some classic Metroid Prime themes and remix those. Like, I think oh, if course, you did, yeah. uh, like, uh, the remix of the Talon Overworld for that big open area that we first saw, like, I think that would kind of hit right in the feels, you know? Like, similarly, mm-hmm. actually, to how Talon Overworld, when you first got there, had this really slow remix of the Brinstar theme. I thought that that was fantastic. So that could be something yeah. that, that I'd be really excited about as well. I would love, like, the, uh, the Crash Forget theme to come back. That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, stuff awesome. like that. Um, really specifically, by the way, from Other M, I would love the Final Mission Resolve track to come back. Uh, that would, I can't. I'm not gonna try to to re- give a refer or an example of what it sounds like, but that's like one of the good so- uh, tracks from that game. And I look think at you, your your baby face turn is complete. It's it's been I, a long journey, but I, yeah, the game has some. I've <laughs> I, it's it's not Dread's soundtrack. Leave that. I'll oh. leave that garbage on the uh, on that game. Other M has. Some redeeming qualities, not many. Um, all right, let's let's continue here. Let's go. Let's go to a question from Cap. Uh, Cap says, "Say Metroid Prime Four is seventy dollars. How much would a special edition cost? How much are you willing to pay? What would you like to see in it? And are Amiibo still an option, or are they dead and buried?" So that's like five questions in one. Um, <laughs> but how much are you spending? This guy is pocket watching over here. I'm spending whatever it's gonna whatever it's gonna cost. Um, yeah, I'm gonna buy it. If there's a special edition, I, I'm probably going to spend whatever it's going to cost to be totally on. Unless, it, it depends on what's in it, I guess. But, like, if it's just, like, a, well, I was going to say if it's just, like, an art book or something, maybe not. But I, I would spend that, whatever it costs to get that. Um, and the, the the collector's edition would have to be, like, really lame in order for me not to, to spend, like, a decent amount of money on it. Especially after, like, eight years and I don't know that it's going to be lame. Like the Metro dread one was pretty cool, like cool enough, like that, that I thought it was worth it for the money. Um, I would expect that there is going to be some amiibo released for Metro prime four for sure. I mean, they're still good. They're still doing amiibo. It's not as, still doing amiibo, yeah. it, it's certainly not as like prevalent as it was back when the smash bros line was still getting released. But I mean, like, it's not like they don't make them anymore. Tears of the Kingdom just had a bunch come out. Uh, Xenoblade just had a bunch come out. So yeah, I, I think that you're probably going to see a new Samus amiibo and, and a Silex amiibo, which would be so cool. So yeah, good question though. Yeah, um, if it's seventy dollars, maybe a special edition's like a hundred. I think uh, I'll buy them. I probably won't get the amiibo. I just it's extra plastic I don't I don't need or have room for. I stopped buying amiibo years ago. I don't even think I got the Sam's returns or any of the dread amiibo. I just don't don't really care that much. So they'll, we'll probably see amiibo for it. That said, that said the Silex amiibo you might I have might, to buy that. I might have to get that cuz that would that would be that would go hard. So I I, I might I might uh I might fold to that. So at Matt, Ridley amiibo like actually, like Meta Ridley, like well, that. obviously, if there's a Ridley amiibo, and if there's a ship ami, okay, maybe I might get the. <laughs> okay. But if it's just like Samus, I'm, I'm not getting it. Probably, I, I probably um, don't unless... need another Samus. I've got uh, <laughs> unless, one, I don't two, know. three. Five. You know what? Only only I just four don't need more Samuses, actually. Here you go. Um. All right, let's do a few more questions each. Maybe like two. Yeah, yeah. Take, two take it away. More. All right. Um. Okay, let's see. Uh, from Dreaded. I don't think we've done one from Dreaded yet, so thanks uh, for sending this one in. Uh, would you rather, when the game initially starts, that the game just begin on the spot, like Tears of the Kingdom, or that it begins with the incredible title screen that the Prime series is known for? Well, I think you're, I think you're leading the question there <laughs> with this one. Um, like Andy says, you only get one chance to make a first impression. I don't think it matters too much, but definitely could spawn different, different initial reactions. I will say... If there's any game I don't want this game <laughs> pulling ideas from, it's Tears of the Kingdom. So I'm gonna just lead off with that. Uh, I think you gotta have the title screen, right? You, as much as it might be cool to be dropped in, I want to hear the theme, 
wow come out i want to see the text come up like i want to hit press start on that bad boy i would like to see the title screen come up first do not deny me that loading up this game for the first time don't just drop me in um that's what i would like so yeah don't don't begin in the action i forget the the term for that but Mm -hmm. uh start with the title screen you know i I will say this uh tears the kingdom's opening was really cool it, like it was pretty cool to just like start and you're like you're going down into the the caves and stuff like that but yeah i i feel like you know i i feel like just the the title screen is so important need that. like it's yeah. so important like and and for metroid prime like you know I, i'll never forget the opening title screen for metroid prime who could forget super metroid like that's just yeah you know some of my greatest memories in, in video games are like you know, being a young boy and watching the title screen of Ocarina of Time, that 3D field, which at the time seemed like it was in like high definition 4K to me. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like it, uh, it, it's such a tone setter that I, I think you have to have it. And and I think, I don't think you want to skip that for, for really any reason. It, it might be different, but I think that's a case where, yeah, you can, you can make a first impression by just getting right to the action. But like, is it a good first impression? You know, like, um, I, I think that there is also value in like slowly kind of like setting up the story and then building to that opening prologue where the where the big action takes place and everything like that. So uh, I would uh, I would expect a title screen and then like a, a slow kind of easing into the story of whatever is going on um, in media res. What I was thinking of uh, the name of the phrase or the the ter- or the whatever. Um, OK, can you refresh me on how so when when. Tears of the Kingdom starts when when you're saying like it starts right in the action like you're immediately given control like what is that like is there a cutscene that starts and then you're like what what is like it, it's been a while but uh, so so what happens is is you press new game and the I mean basically yeah you you have like a, a slight opening cutscene and it's Zelda and it's Link and she is examining some ruins under Hyrule Castle and you just kind of start. Like, so so i don't think that you skip the title screen even there necessarily. oh so you do get I, I could be there, i could yeah. be wrong though because i i will say i i played it when it came out and it was like two in the morning when i finally <laughs> got back to to fire it up and i played till about six in the morning so don't quote me on that i i could be wrong but um it, it very well could have just you might have just pressed start and then then you get that cutscene and then you start but either way like i i do kind of miss like from for actually from breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom like that sweeping title screen like like the wind waker like that's a that's just a great title screen you've got the the theme playing it's it's happy it's joyous it's it's fantastic and and i would hate for metroid prime 4 to miss that yeah i think we definitely get the title screen honestly maybe it, the game starts how the trailer started like you yeah, get the, you start that. the file you get that reading and then samus's ship shows up i mean it's pretty similar to how Metroid Prime starts, right? Like you start a new file, Samus's ship shows up and she jumps in. So I, I think it's going to be like that. I don't think it's going to, I mean, I definitely don't think that you're going to boot the game up and not even get the title screen. I think we'll yeah. still get that. And I also don't think that like when you start a new file, it's just immediately going to throw you into the action. I think we'll get a little bit of a cutscene, a little bit of a build, but probably as much as we got in that trailer and that Metroid Prime beginning as well, or even the other games. Um, I don't know if we'll get like a big, I mean, Prime Three kind of starts with a cutscene ish, doesn't it? I feel like it, it starts with like a, a a cutscene kind of fills you in on what's happening. Like, like the the intro for that's pretty bombastic, but even that doesn't just like slam you right into everything that's going on. So, um, and I, yeah. I think it's worth noting too. Like, like I said, I think you're gonna have a lot of first time Metroid players playing this. So, like, I think you do right. want to slowly, I mean, not super slowly, but like, at least like give them a chance to you know go into their options select whatever control method they want like that, that kind of stuff so i think a title yeah. screen is important i think prime three yeah just from refreshing myself prime three has like a short cut scene it goes through like the the life support like thing and it goes through dark because remember dark samus is like breaking out of the weird cells or whatever and then you pretty much get introduced right to samus and then you have control of the ship and you can start booping on stuff within a, a minute or 30 seconds so mm-hmm. I could see us maybe starting the game in the ship again, but I honestly would not be surprised if the game starts kind of how the, the the trailer starts and it just goes like how we saw it. Pretty much, yeah. You get a little distress signal, fills you in on a very brief info, and then you're good to go. And I can see that. Good to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
All right. Is there one more that uh, you want to do here? Um, yeah, you know what? I, I thought that this was kind of an interesting question. This is from one of our newer members of Discord. So uh, to anybody that is listening and maybe you want to talk some Metroid, get in on some of these episodes, come on down. We have the Discord linked every single week. Um, this is from Kajira. If the whole time-traveling alternate reality thing is true for Metroid Prime 4, what kind of events would you all want to see in the game? For example, Samus enters an alternate universe where she sees a version of herself in a world where the attack on K2L never happened and that version of Samus was able to <laughs> live her best Imagine life. Imagine there's a mission where Samus is just watching herself through a window, like <laughs> eating like Sunday dinner or something. I thought she was going to go with like, uh, imagine that Samus turned into Silex in a, in a parallel universe. Um, oh, Silex dang. is revealed to be Samus from another dimension or another timeline. That would be, I think I want Joey more than that. Um, um, I, that's kind of like some across the spider verse kind of stuff right there. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, that could, that could maybe be kind of cool. Actually. I don't know. You know what? If, if it was done properly, it, it probably could be cool. I, that wouldn't necessarily be my first choice. Wasn't that, doesn't that what happened in the flash? Doesn't like the flash and the new one with, doesn't he become, isn't the bad guy flash himself going into the future, like a ton and he becomes all corrupted and, and, I that is not isn't that the plot of the Flash? You, you got me, brother. I haven't seen the Flash, and I don't think okay. anybody has. You really haven't seen. I watched it. It was on streaming. I was like, yeah, I'll watch it for um, what's his face is Batman. Um, know? I did just um, rewatch BVS actually. Uh, underrated movie, by the way. Underrated movie. If they would have, if they would have done that whole evil Michael Superman Keaton. thing, that could have been cool. Yeah. Anyways, um, I, I have an answer yeah. here. What, what do you think? Well, so just to like get out of the way, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think this is probably gonna happen. Um. And if we are time traveling, it's going to be like on a planet we probably haven't been on. So like it wouldn't be like events we've seen before. But yeah, to indulge in the question, um, I definitely think like this actually I think could happen in the game. would love to see the impact crater hitting Talon 4. That's probably the one thing I think if this is Talon 4 that we could see. Um, I think I think the attack on K2L would be would be cool. I like imagine Samus like getting involved in that and fighting Ridley and like defending herself or something that could be interesting mm-hmm. um trying to think i mean maybe like some of the stuff in the manga just making that canon like for for sure and and leaning into that a bit more even though that's that also kind of overlaps with what we know from zero mission a little bit uh i i think it would be cool if there was like time travel maybe this is like just try- time travel but maybe it's alternate reality or not like to see if there's like if there's like a Ridley species, like maybe there's other Ridleys in, in the world where he came from and like find out what what his deal is or like what, I don't know, if there's an alternate version of him or if he's just like truly one of a kind unique to this universe. I, I think that that could be kind of interesting. And maybe that's like your big bad is like you're pulling in this even more deadly version of Ridley from an alternate universe. Breed. That's kind of like fan fiction-y, but I, I don't know. I think it yeah. could be like, okay. Um, maybe some like ancient Chozo or something. Yeah, like, something you get like that. to go and meet them or maybe Samus meets the Chozo that she was raised by. And I don't know. That could, that could be cool. I don't, I don't want, I think this is probably in fan fiction territory, mm. but the, yeah, I mean, I think there's at least like, maybe she go back in time to before the Luminoth, like fought the Ing or something. Mm hmm. That'd be cool. That could be interesting. Or maybe like the, the guys on the, the species on Brio, right? Reptil- the Reptilicus, right? Before they all kind of died out a bit. Like that could be interesting. I, I Seeing, think it's you know, a story worth telling too if you're doing alternate reality time travel to see like uh, maybe the X came from some kind of reality where that's just normal over there. And, and over here it's it's different and, and they need to, to consume in order to stay alive or something like that. See where they created, where they brought the over. X are the good guys. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. That could be that could be interesting. Like, I, I think like the alternate reality stuff is is a bit tricky because if you do it right, it can be really cool. But if you do it wrong, it it it's pretty lame. So like, I yeah, I don't I don't. We've talked about this on the show. Like, Metroid's the one series that has like a more or less concrete timeline. I hope that I hope I hope I hope if there's any time travel shenanigans in this game, that it's in this game it's contained to this game and it's resolved in this game and it doesn't split the timeline off and it doesn't retcon things and it doesn't make things stop happening and all that like mm. 
I, think I, that's I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I don't think so either, but that's but that's kind of like, I don't know, now potentially a possibility, but I don't think that'll happen. I want to keep stuff, you know, I don't care about the years. Just keep the chronological order um, good. But yeah, I mean, would be would be fun to maybe revisit K2L back in its heyday. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Um, okay, well, I don't know. What'd you say? You want to do like one more each kind of thing? Yeah, we can do one more each. Um one more each let's see uh if all right let's do this one because i don't think we answered one from oh no we did answer one from from griff so let me see uh, we if answered a few else. from griff yeah yeah let me see if there's anyone else um we haven't seen from that i think would be good here if you see a question that you see here that you want to ask or do i'll tell you what th this is now. more <laughs> of a nintendo question than a than a metroid question but i i think it's interesting enough that maybe we could spend a second on this is from kevin pz um and the question is based on nintendo's run of new releases this fall and going into early 2025 do you think the rumors of switch being delayed until 2025 were wrong what if the switch was always originally planned to be released in 2025 because I have a hard time believing that Nintendo would hold off releasing all these games until Switch 2 unless their plan was to release all these new Switch games this fall at the same time the Switch 2 is being launched. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, I, I don't think... Like, we never had any confirmation ever that the Switch 2 was going to launch in 2024. I mean, I thought it would, but it never... It certainly wasn't, like, confirmed by anybody. So, the, calling it a delay... I don't know if that's appropriate. Like, I, I think it's probably pretty easy, though, because, I mean, like, in, in the first half of this year, like, how many Nintendo games have come out? There's been Super Princess Peach, Luigi's Mansion, Paper Mario. Am I missing anything? Yeah. I mean, there there were some, some rumors. I think there was, like, a Bloomberg article or something that the Switch 2 is delayed until Q1 2024 and all that. Um, yeah, I mean... <sighs> I, guess, I don't, to, I don't, to finish my point there, sorry, sorry, Doc, yeah. just let me finish Go that ahead. there. Uh, yeah, I was just rambling. The, the the point I was making is, like, there, there are so few games that came out in the first half of this year that, like, I could easily see, like, if you were to tell me that this new Zelda game that's coming out was going to be originally supposed to launch in, like, I mean, basically now in July instead of September, and that the Switch 2 was supposed to be the big thing for November, I could see that. Um, if you told me that this Mario and Luigi game, uh, Brotherhood was was gonna launch in, you know, in May, I, I could see that, and and yeah, so I, I mean, I, we'll never know. It's it's an interesting question, but um, I I think that there could have been a world where all these games still come out, they still come out for Switch this year, and the Switch Two launches this November. Like I I think that could have worked. Um, it obviously is not going to happen at this at this point in time, but. I I wouldn't have put it past. Like, I think you could have made the scheduling of the games work. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't even think it's that, like, crazy for Nintendo to have kept putting out games. Because no. we're assuming that the Switch 2 is probably going to be backwards compatible with the Switch. So, like, it wouldn't be that crazy for, like, them to still be making Switch games, I guess, so to speak, and have the Switch 2 be out. Like, I don't... I would not put that past Nintendo at all. So, I don't think that the rumors of it being delayed were wrong. Like I definitely could see them having planned it to release in 2024, get delayed and they still had these games planned out. I, I don't know. I don't think we'll ever, ever really know. I don't have a hard time believing that. I mean, maybe I, I don't know this one. Honestly, I really don't, <laughs> I don't have a good answer for this one. I think basically that it's, it's, it's I, I feel like either scenario is, is probably, yeah, I don't know. It was probably plausible. Um, and, I and agree. obviously they didn't go with the releasing the switch to in 2024, which is fine. It was definitely a lean first half of the year, but the second half looks a lot better. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I could, could see easily, it have, I could have seen it being like, okay, maybe Nintendo wanted an extra year to really refine yeah. the product and juice a little bit more out of the switch. I mean, it's not like this, they needed to move on to the, it wasn't a Wii U situation where they're desperately need the next system. The switch two is still selling. So, or the switch is still selling. So yeah. it's, it could have easily been that they did plan for it to be 2024 and then they're like, hmm, maybe there's a feature we need to add or we need to fix something. So we're going to delay it for a year and. Or maybe the games just aren't ready. Like, I, I mean, that could yeah, be a thing, too, right? Ready. Like, it's, we're, we're assuming yeah. it's going to launch with like a new Mario, a new Mario Kart, new, a new, 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 new. 
Like, maybe they just need a little bit more time to make them as good as they can and, be. And it wasn't long ago when COVID delayed things and when chip shortages delayed yeah. things. So it could easily, all of that stuff could have impacted. And, and also, I think there was even a report where, like, potentially Nintendo was like, oh, um, we're not worried about Switch 2 products. Like, we, they, there's no supply chain issues. Like, we have all we need. Which to me, maybe like, oh, maybe they just delayed it to make sure they had all the yeah. parts and ingredients and chips they needed. So that way, when the launch happens, they're not limited. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, good question. Either way, 20, it's already halfway through 2024. So <laughs> we're getting it one way or another soon. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, last one here. I'm just going to pick a quick one whenever one I scroll up onto. Um, I'm about to answer the whole question here. Uh, oh, okay. How about this? Do you... I'll just do one from from Harky Man because Harky Man's the other question we answered was is Silex Joey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and I think we already answered all of his other questions pretty much. But do you think there's a sa- a chance that Samus will speak in Chozo uh, in the in this game? I think that we are going to hear Samus speak in English. I, I don't think, so think we're going to hear her speak in Chozo because I don't think there is going to be any Chozo for her to be speaking to. So. It would, however, be kind of fun if Samus speaks in English and then maybe like curses under her breath or talks shit <laughs> about people in Chozo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that would be really fun. Yeah, that'd be um, good. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I agree with you 100. percent Like, it only makes sense that she spoke in Chozo because there's a Chozo in front of her, and I feel like that's like a moment unique to Dread. That was just a really impactful moment. So leave mm-hmm. it for Dread. Make it make it Dread's thing there. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that, that's pretty much uh, all I have to say for that. Um, although I do hope that Sam speaks in English, and it would be hilarious if she threw out a Chozo curse word. That would be good. That, I think, would be a fun way to do it. Instead of her having talking yeah. to Chozo, like, have her throw something out here and there. Like, that would be... Maybe that's when she gets hurt really bad. She <laughs> says something in Chozo on her breath. Like, that would, that would be a nice, a fun thing and would be realistic, and I'm, I'm down for that. Yeah, that would be, uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, man, oh man, oh man. Thank you so much to everybody for, for all the questions here. We, we still have a ton that are left. Um, some of the ones that we left out, like we said, we, we kind of touched on and we answered them, but, uh, you know, we, we do have a bunch of other ones to get to potentially. Um, we're, we're going to put on the back burner for now, but, uh, you know, maybe we'll come back in, in a few weeks time and do a Q and a part three. Cause I know everybody's buzzing, but, um, next week we're taking a little bit of a pivot. We, you know, lost in the shuffle was the fact that Metro zero mission is finally on Nintendo switch online. I played a little bit of it still a timeless classic. And so we're going to be talking about zero mission next week and bringing back the definitive ranking. So looking forward to that. Um, that's what's going on then. And, uh, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for our Q and a for today. So just wanted to thank everybody for submitting questions. If you are not a member of our discord, not following us on Twitter, make sure that you're doing so, so you can get in on this action next time we do one of these episodes. Cause we will do another one of these episodes. Uh, give us a follow over on uh, Twitter and uh, and give us a follow ourselves as well. We are at Omega Metroid Pod at Spateri316 at Dax Indy underscore. Throw our boy Duminal Crossing a, a follow as well at Duminal Cross. Um, check out OmegaMetroid.com. Speaking of Zero Mission, there's a ton of guides, maps, tricks, tips if you need to, to make your journey through Zebus a little bit easier, as well as a ton of other Metroid content there for you as well. So go and uh, go and check that out. We got a Patreon. We are doing a monthly series called the Great Metroid Area Ranking, where we are painstakingly ranking every single area this series has ever produced. So go and check that out. Patreon.com forward slash SPNet. And uh, hey, if you want to see our lovely faces as we do this episode, check us out over on YouTube. Doom World does a lot of great work over there, uh, doing a lot of cool stuff there. So go and give us a sub there. I dare say, I think that's all of our shilling, all of our plugging that we got to do before we get out of here. So I will leave it there. Everybody take care. Have a great week. And we'll see you back here next week for some Zero Mission Talk. So until then, everybody, take care. Yeah.